I expect the conditions to be uh, not much different than uh, Grassholm, the island when we were there off there. Yeah. That's what I expect the conditions to be like. So we better batten down the boat? Yes, for sure. On this episode of Chasing Spring. This piece of Louisian gneiss is one of the oldest rocks known to man. And here it is, having been placed as a standing stone. It, and it's remained in this in situ for 5,000 years. It's quite a thought, really. My name is Jeremy Norman. I'm the principal owner of Soho Gym. And before that, I was started the world famous Heaven Nightclub. I'm Derek Frost, and professionally, I used to be an interior designer. I met Derek when he was 25 and I was 29, and we've been together ever since. I heard on the radio someone saying that spring travels up through Britain at the pace of a walking man. And I thought that was an intensely romantic notion. Every summer, Derek and Jeremy charter Kalani, an 80-foot twin-screw diesel motor yacht. Usually, they cruise the Mediterranean. This journey will be different. They'll start at the very tip of England, which is the Scilly Isles. And from there, they'll go up the Bristol Channel to South Wales. And from South Wales, right around the coast of Wales, across the Irish Sea to Northern Ireland. Then, up the coast of Northern Ireland, right to the very top, to Raitland Island, and then across to the Mull of Kintyre. They'll then proceed up the Inner Hebrides to Ullapool, taking in all the famous islands, and then from Ullapool to the Outer Hebrides, and from there on to St Kilda. Hopefully, if we make it. Previously on Chasing Spring. I mean, looking outside, it looks like the wind's dropped completely. It has dropped quite a bit, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, sitting here, couple, like say, look after a couple of days, we've had like 40, 42 knots. While waiting for the stormy seas to abate, Derek and Jeremy took a drive north. So this is the most northern spot we're coming to, isn't it? This is the, this is the northern end of our journey. And discovered an unexpected treasure in Lottie Glob. Sealed it all up and a fire out and melted it together in, in the kiln. Is there some symbolism attached to that idea? You know, I never planned anything, it just happens. Yeah. We rejoin Kalani back in Ullapool. They are still waiting for the bad weather to subside so that they can cross the treacherous minch which separates the inner and outer Hebrides. What's the weather forecast? Well, the weather forecast is four to five to six, rough, mm -hmm. moderate to rough, so we might have a bit of a bumpy, bumpy uh, passage. Right. Uh, it's got, we've got six hours. Yep. And we are obviously behind, anchored behind here. Yep. And it's north, northwest. They are forever giving you warnings about this sea area. It gets very rough and... Yeah. But, you know, we'll have a look and see what we think. And we'll be coming out from the north, pretty much going west, 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 and then dropping down southwest here, like so, coming along. I'll probably go southwest of this rock here and then come in all the way up into Tarbos. And we'll anchor just there, actually, in the entrance section there. I expect the conditions to be uh, not much different than uh, Grassholm, the island when we were there off that. That's what I expect the conditions to be like. Uh, so, so we better batten down the boat. Yes, for sure. First mate Dimmy takes charge of weighing the anchor in preparation for the journey ahead. He's worried they might have a problem. There is a rock down below. What does it mean? It means that we might cut a rock and we might have a nice time lifting the anchor. That's what it means. So far, so good. 20 meters. Today, she decided to be a good girl and she came the right way up. Later. 
Look at him, he's fantastic, huh? Beautiful fish. Lovely fish, huh? Yeah. Look at that. I caught it on a fly in the river on the Bulmers estate. Look like you can't even lift that fish. Oh, okay, fine. Put it in a, some sort of a water so the scales don't fly all over the place. How, how, what have I got big enough to put that in water? It's massive. Oh, you make sure you bloody clean that. Yeah, well, this is sti sticks one, dries off and sticks. I hose. You have to actually... I hose it. Okay, there Get all the scales off. Yeah. Just shake their hand and tell him thank you. you know? Give me a hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it'd be interesting. I'm more interested than anything, you know, to have a look at the actual conditions. Uh, I mean, well, for the first three, probably four miles or so, 25 minutes, we'll be protected by the actual headlands. So, but once we get out there, if it's northern, it's north, northwest. It depends what direction it is, because they're saying it's either north or northwest, so we'll see. Despite the earlier sunshine, they set off under cloudy skies. Just as Captain Tim predicted, the seas rise as they hit the open waters and start their crossing of the Minch, heading for Loch Tarbot on the Isle of Harris. Soon enough, they are safely across and land is in sight. just crossed the Minch and have arrived in uh, Paris, South Harris, um, in the Bay of Tarbot, where we've anchored for the night. Beautiful calm sea. Uh, the crossing was only a little lumpy. Um, and here we just stepped ashore to find this fantastic colony of herring gulls with their chicks. In spite of the grey skies, they head inland to check out the wildlife on Harris. Herring gull is one of the larger, more prolific gulls found all around the British Isles. The newly hatched chicks bravely explore their surroundings. Territorial disputes are common among the birds, but are quickly resolved. The egg is about to hatch, look. Is it moving? Yep, the beak is moving in the, in the egg and it's about to hatch. That's fantastic. And there's a little trick, the elder, the elder brother or sister. And you can see on the end of the beak, if you look very carefully, right at the okay. end of the beak of the chick inside the egg, there's a little tooth on the end, and that's an egg tooth and that enables it to break out of the shell of the egg, which it's now in the process of doing. And very shortly it will happen. Thank you.
We've just been looking at a colony of herring gulls uh, that are nesting, and interestingly enough, their eggs now are virtually all hatched. We saw one egg that was actually in the process of hatching, but most of the chicks are up and running, and a lot of them have been scattering all over the rocks, and there have been some fights between adults as well, um, mostly involving someone else's chick. And it's really been quite a sight, and they've been flying above us, making a hell of a racket. Later, back on board. Amazing! It's like amazing. It's the perfect it's rainbow. And it's actually a double rainbow. That is that phenomenal. This arch has been constructed, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Wembley Arch. For us. By as a perfect backdrop for Kalani. Yeah. Although I have to say that boat there has stole the pole position. Well, do they have an image of us through a rainbow? <laughs> yeah, probably. Is it, if they can see the flag, that would be very funny. But what's extraordinary is it's actually going from one land to the other. Yeah. It's going exactly across yeah. the harbour. It's absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. Well, that's really good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, sometimes you could start with something almost glib, like it seemed like a good idea at the time. Very rarely do you start with an idea, yeah, it's going to be this, and send it off, and that's, you know, will be that somehow. And, you know, usually if it's going to be something large scale, it's, you make the maquette, you don't really sure for, for certain what it's going to do. Um, you know, it, it, it might not quite work in scale, you know, and you can't really tell, but then, you know. I mean, are you moved towards making beautiful shapes or textures, etc., or is there some kind of something you're trying to tell us in your work? The idea it almost seems arrogant to say, look, I've got something to say. I don't think I've got anything to say, but I've got an awful lot to find out, and, you know, that's really what I'm doing. They continue on to Kalanish to see the standing stones there. The stones date back to between 2900 and 2600 BC. There are 13 primary stones that form a circle about 13 meters across. To the north is a long approach avenue of stones, with shorter rows to the east, south and west. The stones vary in height from 1 metre to 5 metres and roughly stand in the shape of a Celtic cross. No one can be sure of the meaning of the stones. Some think they were planned as a solar observatory and as a calendar. Others think they were used to worship the gods. This piece of Louisian gneiss, nice, is one of the oldest rocks known to man. And here it is, sitting here, having been placed as a standing stone nearly 5,000 years ago. It, and it's remained in this in situ for 5,000 years. It's quite a thought, really. Once again, everyone is very moved by their experience. Kalani sails south to Loch Maddy. On arrival, Jeremy and Dickie take some time to catch lunch. Yes. I think my jacket's going to scare the fish away. That's the worry thing I have. <laughs> <laughs>
do we want, you know, the guests that are here from the weather, do we want to just spend another night here and just have a quiet day on board and not do much? Well, you give them the weather, it doesn't give us a lot of options. Yeah, I guess not. No one wants to go out and tramp the moors and get soaked in this yeah. But as the day progresses, the weather improves and eventually the sun comes out. They challenge themselves to climb to the summit of North Lee, which is about 800 meters above sea level. Kalani is a tiny dot in the bay. Near the summit, they come across the wreckage of an American B-24 bomber from World War II. It's a sobering reminder that danger abounds in the untamed highlands. It's time to head back for a late lunch. Glasses. This is all the stuff that comes from the Hebridean smokery, Fergus's um, smokery. And I don't know what all the things were. Do you remember, Jeremy? Those are smoked scallops, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah, those are smoked scallops. That's smoked sea trout. That's a mackerel that I caught yesterday. And, and that's, that's smoked sea trout. That's smoked sea trout. And that is oh, no, that. smoked salmon. I think. That's smoked salmon. Yeah, I think that's what smoked else salmon. did he? What else did we get from it? There's well, some we pate. Some pate, but that, we're having that as the start of the evening. Let's <laughs> smoke whatever it is. Smoked salmon pate. Does he have a bread maker? It looks wonderful. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. Mm. Beautiful beetroot and uh, cucumber salad. Fresh made bread made by Ren this morning. And a freshly caught mackerel. Please don't forget that. <laughs> very, very, very little mackerel. What mad sort of person did I marry? Look at him running naked along the beach and it's freezing. Next time on Chasing Spring, the side of it after good. a visit to a castle, they talk again about the passage to St Kilda. What we've got at the moment is unstable lows flying through all over the place. So even to go to St Kilda, we need a nice stable high pressure. That's looking highly unlikely. And what would we find? And what you'd find is you'd have massive seas. What Kalani would do, as she has done in instance before when I've been caught out in those conditions, is she would bury her nose, she would scoop up the water. You'd probably have around about a foot of water running down the deck. Something is not dangerous if nothing goes wrong. It goes on to like a domino effect. That happens, and as a result, that happens, and as a result, that happens. And Derek and Jeremy must face the possibility they may not complete their journey. Thank you.